Personally, I like dirtying up some audio, making it sound kind of grimy. I think both of us, when something's a little too clean, it just feels a little yeah. too polished. What's up, guys? I'm Richie. And I'm Ferris, and we are The Animals, producers out here in LA. We've worked with some dope people, The Weeknd, Belly, French Montana, Skinny. Our first placement was on The Weeknd's Kissland album. That came through Belly and Danny Boy Styles, the same studio that we were working out of, South Beach Studios. They were clients one day. I was familiar with their work and when they came in, we just cooked up with them for a week and made all kinds of different stuff. And a lot of those records ended up getting demoed for the Weekend's Kissland album. So we met when we were 17, 18, around that. We really bonded off of like, just being music heads, talking like nerd music shit. We both like hip hop. We both like horror movies. We usually go for like minor chords or yeah, something kind of spooky dark sounding. You know what I mean? Our main go-to from Native Instruments is the complete control software with the keyboard. That thing really is game changing. The chord trigger and the key control, it's like a lifesaver. So we're gonna make a beat using the complete now collection from Native Instruments. Today, I figured we'd try to find like a cool lead art or something that really would cut through fire, you know what I mean? We're gonna open up FL, we're gonna fire up that clout to ply. So yeah, maybe start with like a basic art, build off of it, manipulate it, and make it something special. Go up an octave or two. Okay, so we got our bass, high pitch kind of arp. Gonna add something else to it before I mm -hmm. work with it. Maybe some chords. Pull up that hybrid keys. Are you gonna play the chords or you wanna use the chord trigger? I usually do the chord trigger. Yeah. We do a lot of stuff we do by ear. You know what I mean? So if you're not classically trained or anything, if you can, you know, figure out the key which in this case, it's D minor. You can map everything to set key, and then you can harmonize, you can add chords, you know, it works for literally any scale. It's had a cool little vibe. I'll take this and I'll just bounce it over. Send it to Ferris. All right, so we got our two stems here Rich gave me. I'm gonna start by soloing the high-pitched kind of arpeggiated sound right here. I'm gonna see what it sounds like reversed real quick. What I want to do now is I'm going to make some chops out of the reverse sound. So maybe we can find a little stab or something to play on top of everything to kind of just give it a little, little something else, something different. So we got our empty battery session right here. And what we want to do is take our chops that we did, just drag them right here onto our pads. And now we got like a little instrument of stabs to mess with. So I'm using Machine Micro to trigger the sounds in battery as like a MIDI controller. I got those in there. And I've got my reverse chops from the original arpeggiated sound. We're kind of like resampling it. So we got our reverse chops, they're a little high. So you can even go on each one right here and you have total control within battery to pitch it down. You can even reverse it. And then I think let's pitch them down an octave each one. So now they got like a weird kind of spooky low texture. What we 
we like to do sometimes, which is going to change the vibe of it. Turn on our flex time and logic on anything that's audio. And then we're going to very speed this down a little bit. So you go here, very speed and MIDI. And let's go down like 18% and see what that sounds like. Sounds pretty cool. Let's throw some perks on it just to get just some other little textures, stuff to make it unique. We're going to load up the new um, Battery Now kits. They got some new kits that are dope. And sometimes what I like to do when I'm laying perks is before I even hear them or, or audition them or whatever, I'm going to throw a bunch of effects on the track. So you can already hear. When I was auditioning it originally, it would, it would have just sounded regular hit. But if we start with this, it's like a, it's like a whole other kit. A little too much verb. It's like that. So I'm gonna stem this and bounce it right back to Rich. 99.9% .9 of what you hear from us, Rich will have programmed the drums. I would like to like get in there and kind of tweak sounds a little more. Yeah, so, but overall we're super collaborative, I would say. We really trust each other's opinion. We also pride ourselves in being like a one-stop shop, you know what I mean? Mix mastered, vocal recording, arrangement. We love getting in with, with writers and artists and being able from start to finish, like, okay, it's done. I just imported them. We just set our tempo. I believe our new key should be F sharp minor. So I found a really cool sound earlier while Ferris was, you know, working, doing his thing over there. That was right in Lo-Fi Glow under the synth leads batch. And it's called Squirt. Cool bass sound from uh, yeah retro machines. This guy right here. I started up here, but if you go all the way down, you're here now. Let's see. I came here to retro machines, went to the brass, and I went to the matrix brass. This one kind of spoke to me. When he's automating the synth bass, you can feel it just slowly, gradually build up intensity, which is cool. It creates like anticipation. And even if you may not like hear it entirely, subconsciously, that's, it's going to build a momentum. But I feel like we need one more sound, like a drop sound. I might go back to Cloud Supply for that. That sounds crazy. Cloud supply parameter knobs, like I said earlier, man, are so legend. This sound started off like this. Yeah, very pingy. And now it's softer. What's dope about the Play Series is that when you load anything up, like they all kind of just give you the opportunity to pick and choose between a lot of the dope instruments. So, you know, you hit the balance fader whenever you do find something and you can kind of... You know, pick and choose a vibe. I had already found some cool kits from Battery earlier. The Cribs kit. Fire. Got a cool little snare. It's funny, I've been looking for this snare for such a long time. I found a kick earlier, right? And I'm gonna lay this kick, but I also have another kick that I use. You know what I mean? So what I want to do is lay this kick first and then this one. And then what I'll do is I'll probably take out some of the low end, so it's more like a... Not many samplers have this much power, 
yeah, you can like filter something out in a lot of other samplers, but it won't like it won't feel the same. The algorithm at which the filter and the EQs are built on battery, they're fired. We got a cool little drum groove. No, I was thinking of looking for 808. This is that massive X. This is the central 808. I'll just take my kick and layer it with the 808, you know, so that it... So whenever the yeah, 808's smacking, the kick is punching first with the 808 ringing after. Got the kick here. It's hitting at the same time as the 808. I'm just laying some chords. I found a really dope sound. I wanted a pad sound. And I pulled up hybrid keys and was able to find one really quickly, you know? Pad spear. throw some snaps in and just find something in battery just filter through see what the and probably throw rom on it again so it's got that real you know kind of r and splash snap so i found a cool perk that could be a snap pitched it up take some of the attack off So now we're just listening back and trying to build arrangement, pretty much. The sections are all there, and now it, how, how it's arranged and how it builds up and whatever is all preference. And since we got a lot of instruments going, we, there's, there's all kinds of different combinations of original chords, the newer ones we laid, bell thing, the reverse sound. So this is where you build your, you know, verse sections, hook sections, pre's, all that. What we try to do with, with the bounces is it's a rough structure. So as long as we have all the sections, when eventually we're cutting the record with the artist, we'll have them in there. And then in Pro Tools, I can just slice and duplicate and move. And then eventually we'll have to revert back to the original session and match the new arrangement of however we recorded it. You have a beat that's good, you know, as the song gets made, you kind of figure out what else it needs, you know what I mean, to kind of finish it. I feel like sometimes you can kind of overwhelm an artist or a songwriter if there's too much going on in the production depending on the genre and sometimes we leave it a little more minimal and do a lot of this that you're seeing as like post-production it's really fun man because every time you guys put something out it, it elevates and it really inspires me to be like all right let me create some new stuff and see what else you know and this stuff is fun man once you get to a kind of point you're like beat making career or like your process you kind of look for things that are a little bit more special to put in your beats and that's what's really cool about something like lo-fi glow is that the sounds are so specific and so special that you can kind of just thumb through you know tweak something a little bit find what you're looking for and then cloud supplies like lo-fi glow on steroids it's like if i want to go to space with lo-fi glow you know what i mean all right guys that's the beat you heard it this is what we did with it you want to try your own version Go to Metapop, download the stems, switch it, flip it, change the BPM, do something. But go to Metapop, download the stems, and the winners are actually going to get a bunch of cool Native Instruments prizes, so you might as well try your shot.